Welcome to Tulsa Botanic Garden Virtual Lessons. I'm your host, Susan Faro. Each lesson will have three parts. The first part is a storybook that you can find at any of the local bookstores. The second part is the discussion. That is the information of the lesson. It includes a downloadable worksheet or diagrams that you can use to help reinforce the lesson. And then the third part is activities. There are one or more that you can do. They may also include a downloadable lesson. Um, they will have instructions, so they are easily completed by you. I hope you enjoy these. Thanks for watching. In My Garden, written by Charlotte Zolito, illustrated by Philip Stead. In my garden. In the spring, what I love best in my garden are the birds building nests. Of course, there are other things I love in my garden. Red tulips like a patch of fire, under the pear tree, violets, hyacinths, and daffodils. But in the spring, what I love best in my garden are the birds building nests. In the spring, what I love most to do is fly kites. Of course, there are other things I love to do, play dolls and roller skate and skip rope. But what I love most to do in the spring is fly kites high over the garden wall. In the summer, what I love best in my garden are roses. Of course, there are other flowers I love too, marigolds and daisies and Canterbury bells. But in the summer, what I love best in my garden are roses, red ones and yellow and white. In the summer, what I love most to do is have lunch under the pear tree. Of course, there are other things I love in the summer, listening to the birds singing in the trees lying in the tall grass, watching the butterflies, and swimming in the cool stream. But in the summer, what I love most to do is to have lunch under the pear tree. In the fall, what I love best in my garden are chrysanthemums. Of course, there are other things I love in my garden, the tree turning red and golden brown, the wind blowing, and the squirrels gathering nuts. But what I love best are the chrysanthemums, tangled and shaggy and smelling like spice. In the fall, what I love to do most is rake leaves. Of course, there are other things I like to do in the fall, buy new sweaters and skirts and pencils boxes for school, and pick the ripe golden pears from my tree. But what I love most to do in the fall is rake leaves and jump in the big, crackly, golden piles of them. In the winter, what I love best in my garden is snow, like bumps and humps sparkling everywhere you look. Of course, there are other things I love in the wintertime. The purple sunsets and the moon rising early and the pine tree with its branches heavy and white. But in the winter, what I love best in my garden is the snow clean and white and still. In the winter, what I love most to do is ice skate on the pond. Of course, there are other things I love to do in the winter. Make snow angels, coast on my sled and watch the black shadow of the pear tree in the snow. But what I love most to do in the winter is skate on the frozen pond and feel the whiteness and wind and winter all around. April, May, June, July, summer blue or winter sky, winter, spring, summer, fall. Oh, I really love them all. Welcome to Tulsa Botanic Garden, lesson on photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis, you ask? Well, photosynthesis is a process that occurs only in plants. Mammals 
insects, birds, and even humans cannot photosynthesize. But without photosynthesis, we would be in a big world of hurt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the things that are necessary for our plants to take in and things that a plant will release in order for photosynthesis to occur and create energy. Everybody's going to need a copy of this diagram. We're gonna go step by step and learn all about photosynthesis. Hope you enjoy this. All right, here we go about photosynthesis. The first thing we need to do is on your diagram, draw the most beautiful flower that you know and color it and put it in the very center of this diagram. Next on your diagram, let's add the sun. At the very top of the diagram, draw the sun, label it sun, and draw an arrow pointing toward the flower. What this means is that the flower is going to absorb the energy from the sun. That's the first thing that plants need to photosynthesize. The next thing that flowers or plants need in order to photosynthesize is water. Where does that water come from? Well, we know that when it rains, plants get wet, but what happens if there's been no rain? Where does the water come from? Well, the water comes from the ground. So in your diagram, let's draw some water. We can label it H2O, which is the chemical formula for water. We can label it water, and then let's draw a few water droplets, and then draw an arrow to the flower, because the flower has to absorb the water to help with photosynthesis. The last thing that plants need for photosynthesis to occur is carbon dioxide. Have you ever heard the statement that plants grow better when you talk to them? That's because humans release carbon dioxide. So when we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide. Well, the plants need that carbon dioxide for photosynthesis to occur. So between the sun and the water, let's write in CO2, which is the chemical formula for carbon dioxide, or you can write carbon dioxide. Now we don't have a picture for it because carbon dioxide is a gas, but you'll want to draw an arrow to your flower because that is the third thing that the flower needs in order for photosynthesis to occur. So we've talked about the three things that plants must take in in order for photosynthesis to occur. Now there's two things that they release from the process of photosynthesis. And the first one is very, very important to us because it is oxygen. Why is oxygen important to us? I bet you know. Are you breathing right now? So when you inhale, you take in oxygen. Oxygen is what allows us to continue living. So what we're gonna do next to the sun, we're gonna draw in O2, which is the formula for oxygen, or we can write in oxygen. Now, once again, oxygen is a gas and we can't see a gas, so we really don't have a picture to put in that. And then make sure you draw an arrow from the flower to the oxygen, because that means the flower is releasing the oxygen. The next thing that flowers release is called glucose, or we can say sugar. Glucose is just a fancy name for sugar. And this is what gives us energy from the plants. So below the oxygen, you can write in sugar, or you can write in glucose, and then make sure you draw an arrow from the flower to the glucose because that is what the plant is producing from photosynthesis. 
Now, once again, I don't have a picture of what sugar or glucose looks like because it is a chemical. So we've talked about the three things that plants must take in for photosynthesis and the two things that are produced from the photosynthesis. So what's that last spot for? Well, that is for energy. In the very bottom, write in energy and make sure you draw an arrow from the plant to the word energy. Because what this means is the plant is producing energy for itself in order to grow more flowers or to fruit, but it's also providing energy for us when we consume plants. So now that we've talked about how photosynthesis occurs, what plants need to take in and what plants release from photosynthesis, let's finish up our diagram and turn it into a flower. Cut out around the diagram, add a stem and a couple of leaves, and you have your very own flower. And in each petal tells you what is necessary for photosynthesis. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on photosynthesis from the Tulsa Botanic Garden. I'm your host, Susan Farrow. Thank you for watching.